Whether you followed the build in my latest video of this drill press table or somebody else's or you came up with your own design, you're going to have an issue with being able to raise and lower the table of the drill press. When you extend the table out like this, you're not going to be able to easily reach the controls in the back to unlock and raise and lower the drill press table. I'm going to show you how to fix that today. This drill press table modification is a little bit advanced, but it's not something you can't handle. We're going to be doing some metal work today. That's why I have on my blacksmith shirt. Let's get to it. You don't necessarily have to take the drill press apart to do this, but it will make it a lot easier. And I'm definitely going to do it because it'll be almost impossible for me to film this without taking it apart. So I'm just going to pull the head off, lift the table off, and work on it upside down over on the bench. I have the auxiliary drill press table upside down on my workbench and I have the table that came with the drill press still attached to it and I want to continue working with it like this because this handle here is what raises and lowers the bench. I'm going to reroute it so I can work it from the front of the table and this handle here is the one that locks it on the post. I don't want to have to reach around the back. I'm going to relocate this somehow off onto the side so I'll have one handle up there and one on the side. This is the hardware I ordered to relocate those handles. First I got two crank handles, some pillow block bearings, some shaft couplers, and a couple of pieces of 12 millimeter shaft. These two gears right here are the key to the build. They're 90 degree gears, so the sh one shaft will come in this way, 90 degrees and come out this way. They mesh together as you turn one, it turns the other one. First thing I need to do is take this handle off. The first coupler I'm going to use is a 14 millimeter to 12 millimeter. So I cleaned it up, got all the burrs off of it, but it's still really tight. I don't want to force it in there just in case I need to take it apart. So I took a dowel, cut a slot in it, and put some emery cloth in there. And I'll just sand out the middle of this. Suppose I could use a drill. I think that should be good enough. Put this back in here. Still gonna have to tap it on there a little bit. So next thing I need to do is get this gear on here. So I'm going to cut a piece of the shaft off, go in here and to the gear. I'm not getting anywhere. This diamond blade really works well. I didn't know it when I ordered this coupling, but it's flexible. It's something for CNC, that's why everything's metric. And that's not going to work with this gear because as you put torque on it, it'll just push away from the other gear. So I'm going to have to use one of these pillow block bearings to hold it steady. So once I get everything tightened up, I'll cut a block of wood that's the right height. That'll keep this all steady. I have it all mocked up here with my wheel in the front, the shaft coming out to my angle gears here, going into the mechanism that raises and lowers it. And these blocks ended up being two and three sixteenths high off the bottom of the table. So I'm gonna screw these together, glue them and screw them to the table. Gonna use a centering bit to get some pilot holes started. I 
and then some three and an eighth cabinet screws go all the way down into the table. Well, that's a bummer. See if I can get this short cabinet screw to tighten up. I had to back this coupling off slightly because it was rubbing against the pillow block housing and it was making it hard to turn. I can turn it easily enough now. This one here, I need to set it so that it meshes with this gear. But if I put it too tight, it's gonna bind. And if I put it too loose, it's gonna skip. So really take your time. You know, we're not doing uh, ring and pinion setups here, but you still need to get it so it's seated properly. And then you need a 90 degree angle between the two of them. Angle looks pretty good. I'm about halfway through the shaft here. So I just need to snug it up and hopefully everything will stay in line. I have a good 90 degree angle and this is pretty good. So now I just need to adjust how far it goes in to mesh so that it turns okay, but it doesn't bind. I think that's good right there. All I have to do is snug up these set screws. So now I'll be able to raise and lower the table from the front. So now I need to do something similar with this here. This is the lock to pinch the housing onto the post. I have another shaft and a coupler. This here is 12 millimeter, but it's knurled, so it doesn't fit in here quite easily. I guess I'm gonna file the, some of the knurling down so I can get this on here instead of pounding it in there with a hammer. See if this works. So now I just need to measure the height right here and mount this pillow block bearing and then I can put my wheel on the end out here. I'm not gonna tighten up the set screws on this pillow block bearing because as I loosen this up, the shaft's gonna need to slide through the inner race a little bit. So I'm just gonna leave it loose. Just need to trim this off a little bit. Now I have this handle on the side and I can loosen this screw up. Before I give myself a hernia, lifting this monster back up onto the shaft, I need to grease up these gears pretty well. And because this connection right here is really critical between these two gears, I'm just going to throw a few more screws in to the bottom of the table to hold everything in place. If your drill press has the ability to pivot, Make sure you get a wrench on this bolt right here and make it really tight. Otherwise your gears are going to lose mesh with each other and it won't work. And also make sure this is tight right here. This allows your table to twist. A little bit of a struggle getting it all back together just because of how heavy it is. If you're working with a full size drill press, definitely get some help. Now all I have to do is unlock it here on the side. And then I can raise and lower it. And I can still pivot it to the side, which I've never needed to do, but I can still do that. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. See what I'm up to next time.